Hello, in this video segment, we're going to discuss an introduction to imaginary numbers. Um, first of all, an imaginary number is written as I, and it represents the square root of negative one. Um, with, uh, with any other square root that has a positive number underneath, uh, square root of nine equals three, or, you know, something square root of, uh, three is approximately 1.732. Uh, the square root always represents a number which you can multiply with itself to get that. Three times three makes nine. When you have a negative underneath the square root, because a positive times a negative equals a negative, uh, it's impossible to find something like this where you know a plus times a plus makes a negative, or a minus times a minus makes a negative. It takes a plus and a minus, two different numbers, to make that negative under the square root. That's why when you have a negative under a square root, we have an imaginary number, uh, something that's just that's not real. Uh, despite not being real, we can still do uh, a lot of things with it. Uh, that's why we designate them as uh, imaginary numbers and worry about them. Uh, let's just start out with, uh, say, the square root of negative 9. Um, so the first step with imaginary numbers is just identifying, uh, identifying them and rewriting them in a proper form. Uh, I'm going to identify this as an imaginary number because it's a square root of a negative uh, number, negative 9. And uh, just like with any square root, I'm going to just break this up into 9, the square root of 9, and the square root of negative 1. This is a... a uh, tool that's always available when we're dealing with square roots, breaking them up into two different square roots that are multiplied together. Um, so once I see that we have the square root of 9, that's just 3 times the square root of negative 1. And that's 3i. So the square root of negative 9 is, is 3i. Um, I need to kind of make an adjustment here. Uh, the square root of 9 actually is positive or negative 3. So the square root of negative 9 is actually positive 3i or negative 3i. Uh, so that's just a, a, at the most basic level what an imaginary number is. Um, imaginary numbers can be uh, added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. So we're going to take a look at that next. Um, if you... Uh, if you take, say, 5i plus 3i, that's 8i. Uh, imagine your numbers add and subtract just like, uh, just like anything else, or 5i uh, minus 7i is negative 2i. That's very simple, just like any adding or subtracting. Um, Sometimes imaginary numbers are combined with real numbers, and they're called complex numbers. So, for example, 5 minus 2i is a complex number. This is the real part. And this is the imaginary part, and they're, they're part of the same number, or a complex number. Complex numbers you find when you solve a quadratic equation, uh, for example, and uh, you might have two imaginary answers or two complex answers. That will be dealt with in a, in a different video. If you have two complex numbers that you want to combine, for example, 5 minus 2i minus... 7 minus 10i, if you have two uh, complex numbers which you want to subtract, then it's basically combining like terms. 5 minus 7 makes negative 2. Negative 2i minus a negative 10 makes a plus 10. So negative 2i plus 10i makes 8i. So that's uh, the other complex number. Notice I'm putting parentheses around these complex numbers. That's not required, but oftentimes you'll see them written that way. Um, so addition and subtraction of imaginary numbers, addition and subtraction of complex numbers is very simple. Uh, let's look at multiplication. 
Okay. So I told you that the square root of negative 1 is i. And also, uh, the square root of 9, we said was 3. Um, so by definition of a square root, if you take 3 times 3, that's 9. And then likewise, if you take i times i, that is uh, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is negative 1. Uh, so the short story here, the short version is that if you take i and multiply it times another i, that's like the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. That's just negative 1 in the same way this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 9, and that's 9. Uh, so when you, when you multiply imaginary numbers together, you have to keep in mind that i squared is always negative 1. Uh, so, for example, if you have 5i times 8i, that would be 40i squared, or 40 times negative 1, which is negative 41. 7i uh, times 10i. Is 70 i squared or negative 70 so that's how um, that's how imagine numbers are multiplied complex numbers can be multiplied almost in the exact same way so say you had 3 minus 2i times 7 plus 5i Uh, so we have two binomials, just like always, we're going to use FOIL. And we're going to have uh, 3 times 7 is 21. The outer terms, 3 times 5i makes 15i. And uh, minus 2i times 7 is minus... 14i minus 2i times 5i is minus 10i squared. Now we're going to combine the like terms here. Uh, we've got 21, 15i minus 14i is plus 1i. And minus 10i squared times i squared is like minus 10 times minus 1. And that makes plus 10. So this makes 31 plus i as a complex number. Um, in, a, uh, in a different video, we're going to learn about complex conjugates. That's when you have when you have two complex numbers that are exactly the same except they have different signs. There's a lot that goes into complex conjugates and, and they're useful um, they, they tell us some things, but for now I just want to practice uh, multiplying them together and I want to show you that when you multiply complex conjugates, let me write that down. When, they, when they're multiplied together, you get a real number. I'll show you why. 2 times 2 is 4. Outers 2 times minus 3i makes minus 6i. The inners are 3i times 2. That's plus 6i. Last is 3i times minus 3i minus 9i squared. Those cancel out because minus 6i and plus 6i cancel out. So you get 4 minus 9i squared is like minus 1. So minus 9 times minus 1 makes 9. So these multiply just to be a simple 13. So that uh, shows you how to multiply uh, uh, both imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers just have the i, and then complex numbers have the real and the imaginary part. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to show you in this video is exponents of i. Uh, 
So I told you i to the first is the square root of negative 1. And then we saw i to the second is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which actually is just negative 1. Let's think about i cubed. i cubed, you can think about it in two ways. This way. So that would mean that these guys right here would end up being negative 1. And then we have a leftover to be negative, screw it, negative 1, which is negative i. You could also think about i cubed as simply i squared times i to the first because the exponents add up to 3. Um, so i squared is negative 1. And that still gets you to your negative i. And then i to the fourth, that is going to be like i squared times i squared. And i squared is negative 1. And it is, again, negative 1 here. So i to the fourth is like negative 1 times negative 1. That's positive 1. So let's write these down again. I'm going to just be a little bit more organized about it. i to the first is i. i to the second is negative 1. i to the third is negative i. i to the fourth is positive 1. Okay? Think about i to the fifth. That's like i to the 4th times i to the 1. So that's going to be uh, 1 times i, or just i. So you can come over here and realize that i to the 5th is the same as i to the 1st. Now let's do i to the 6th. That's like i to the 4th times i to the 2nd which is positive 1 times negative 1, and that multiplies to be negative 1, because this is 1, that's negative 1. So I'm going to say, yeah, i to the 6 is just negative 1. It's just like i squared. Let's do i to the 7th. That's i to the 4th times i cubed, or positive 1 i cubed was negative i. You could say i of the seventh is negative i, just like i cubed. And then i to the eighth that's like positive one times positive one, which is one. And then i to the 8th is positive 1. Uh, so what you might notice here is that the i, the powers of i rotate on in within these four answers over and over and over. i, negative i, negative, I'm sorry, i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. You could probably guess the next four. i the ninth i to the 10th, i to the 11th, and i to the 12th. i to the 9th is going to be i. i to the 10th is negative 1. i to the 11th is negative i. i to the 12th is positive 1. So with that in mind, uh, the last thing I want to do before the end of this video is look at some really big exponents uh, of i. And let me just keep this. Well, we'll, we'll just take that away. Um, I'm going to just remind you that i to the first is i. i to the second is negative 1. i cubed is negative i. And i to the fourth 
this positive one. Let's do i to the 72 power. And I want to know how many times 4 goes into that. So if you take 72, divide it by 4, 1 time, 8 times, remainder of 0. 72 is like i to the 4th. Uh, 18 times, which is like positive 1 to the 18th, which is positive 1. So i to the 72 power is positive 1. Let's do uh, i to the uh, 103 power. That looks scary. I want to know how many times does 103 get divided by 4? So it goes into 10 twice. 2 times 4 is 8. We're doing my long division here. 2, 3, 4 goes into 23 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract. And then you have a remainder of 3. So 4 goes in 25 times with a remainder of 3. So this is what we're going to say. Uh, 103 is like i to the 4th 25 times with 3 i's left over. This is going to be 1 to the 25th power times i cubed, which is negative i. That's going to be negative i. So when you have a, an exponent that's really large on an i, don't, don't get scared. Just remember that it's really only the remainder that is going to matter here. And the remainder is going to be 0, 1, 2, uh, or 3. Uh, because every i to the fourth is just going to be 1 times 1 times 1. So here we had 1 uh, i to the fourth 25 times, and it's just 1 times 1 times 1 over and over and over. And then we have three leftovers, and those three leftover i's are what matter. So this will conclude our introduction to uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dealing with exponents on imaginary numbers.